To calculate the current, we can turn to Maxwell's equations. Here is Ampere's law. If we apply Ampere's law to the EZ field in the grid at the midpoint of the crane, the displacement current, dddt, right here, will essentially be zero because the skin depth of steel at 1,280 kilohertz is just 68 micrometers. And our grid resolution, delta, is one meter. So this term is going to be approximately zero. So on the right side of Ampere's law, we're just left with the integration of the current density, J, flowing in the z direction towards us. So I'm assuming this is x, that's y, and z is toward us, and flowing through s, where s would be bounded by hx and hy. So this surface, this is sur uh, surface S. So this, as we integrate J through surface S, we're going to get the total current I flowing through that surface towards us, anywhere in that delta X by delta Y square. Now, since the skin depth of steel is so small, in real life, this current will essentially be a thin surface current along the outside of the steel cylinder. So this is all steel, but the current is only going to be flowing along the very outside of it. In our FTTD grid, if we sum up all the current flowing through the surface of the grid cell, modeling the crane, it will be equal to this IS, it's like a surface current, the total surface current flowing along the outside of the crane. So on the right side of Ampere's law here, we're going to get I S. Then from the left side of Ampere's law, we can see that this surface current is, must be equal to the integration of the H fields along a line that encloses the crane. Since we applied the right side of Ampere's law to the grid cell having the EZ component and the midpoint of the crane, we should also apply the left side of Ampere's law to the same delta x by delta y square cell having the easy component. So this is our crane coming out of the screen towards us. Fortunately, from the Yi grid arrangement, we have H fields already stored at those locations circulating around the EZ field. So from the right-hand rule, we would want to sum the H fields in the counterclockwise direction. So for the current, it evolves over time, so we can store it every time step. We could take h, y, i, j, k. This is where i, j, and k are for the midpoint of the crane. Minus h, y, i minus 1, j, k. Minus h, x, i, j, k. And plus h, x, this is the one on the bottom, i, j minus 1 and k. And all of that would have to be multiplied by delta. So hy times delta, that hy will be this one, will be integrating, summing up hy along this edge. And this hy will be summing up in the opposite direction that it's stored in the grid, will be summing up in this direction, in the counterclockwise direction all the way around. And we multiply times delta since that's the length of the cell. And then the same for the hx's. We add this one and we subtract this one since it's on the opposite direction that we want to integrate. So this is what our model looks like now with the current monitor, monitor at the midpoint of the crane. Let's sample the current at k equals 31, so at the midpoint of the crane, and at i max and j max divide by 2. i max divide by 2 and j max divide by 2. Run your code and see how much current is induced along the crane. Since the current will change over time, create a plot of the current versus time steps.